we have too much uh, bleacher uh, consultations. Mm. I'm sitting here and I see a kid killing Lil Jamal, right? Who does Lil Jamal work with? He worked with Dorian. Man, I got to get with Dorian. Well, do you really? You don't know yet. You don't know if he has that natural ability and I'm just running him through drills and he has it. Or if you came and saw some of the stuff that Jamal has gone through, understanding PNR, man, one of the brightest minds, man, boy run pick and roll like one of my college players, right? Now you say, okay, I, I need to go to him because he's teaching them the game. C -G -C. King yeah. of nation, number one pick in the nation. Yeah. I need my payment, man, I need my placement. I am, yeah. starting on the payment. I am, King of nation, number one. Yeah, one of the scores like 40 to 40. Buy for a movie, a 30 for 30. Been from the south, making real dirty. Been talking loud, but nobody heard me. Is that to me up? CG and DD, y'all can start. Y'all can call me on James. Y'all thought y'all was worthy. Y'all isn't worthy. CGN, we all we got. Got a treat for y'all today, man. A real treat. And I just wanted to kind of just, I want to talk about why I say CGN, we all we got. I open, open the podcast with it and I close it with it. The reason why is because Can't Guard Nation, we all we got. Like there's so many issues that go on, so many things that go on with youth sports, amateur sport athletics and stuff, man. So we, and then not being talked about. So let me ask you something. When you say we, are we talking athletes? Are we talking a certain race? Are we talking a gender? What, what, so when you say, I'm just curious, could we, let's say, you know, when you, so when you say we, who, who is we? Who do you think? The sports world? No, I just, I'm just talking about the, I'm just talking, well, I think there's issues. I don't think it's a race. I think there's issues in every category, every, you know, different yeah. sports. But, but as I, as I have said before, I think with our culture, Mm -hmm. I think it's just there's certain things that go on. That's why I asked that. Especially, okay. especially, you know, most of our kids are playing what? Basketball and, fo and football. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I just think but that. We're covering it all, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, covering yeah, yeah, it all. Yeah, yeah we're, cover we're covering and it all. Both genders. And it, both genders. And the thing about it is, man, is so many people that are lost. They have, they have no clue on what moves to make. So many parents lost. They don't know. They have no clue, man, on where to put their kids at or what to do. They're making bad moves. I mean, you know, y'all gonna hear me talk about the bad move I made in high school. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, but it, 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 you know, if you don't know, you don't know. So nobody's talking about this. So that's why the podcast was created. And today we got a treat. And when I heard, <laughs> I've known this brother Dorian Lee, first of all, oh my gosh, Appreciate thank you, you for coming, it, man. man. Appreciate, Appreciate y'all for, yep. for having me. Enjoy. <laughs> Appreciate man. you coming. Appreciate Let me you tell y'all something. Up. Real talk. When I moved to Atlanta in '97, I started working at Run and Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> and this dude, I think he was in there with uh, Kalila Miller. I, I think I, I, the girl that used to play a dub. Yeah, yeah, a while ago, yep. Wow, but when I first yep. my I got a job and run a shoot, man, just used to see you in. But so he's he's been a trainer, man, um, for years yeah, here, man. A long I don't like, time, like man. A, a long time, man. And um gotten to know him over the last you know, better over the last few years, man. And um, man, this brother is a wealth of knowledge. But when I heard about this book <laughs> That he's coming out with, man. I'm gonna get some heat now. I'm gonna get some heat. Bro. No, really, man. It because 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 from jump, we had an episode that we had already written down called Disillusioned Parents. Wow. We already had that down. And then somebody came to me, my brother came to me and said, Man, did you hear about Dorian's book? I'm like, nah. He was like, bro, you're gonna have to get him on the podcast. <laughs> That's what my brother told me. And the name of the book, and I'm going to say this, Only Hit Dogs Holler. Okay, that's not the name of the book, but I'm going to say that before <laughs> I tell you the title of the book. The title of the book is... Be before you tell us the title, Jermaine, what, what, what does Dorian do? What, what is he? What, like, why? I'm a, just yeah, curious. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a nobody, I look, you know, man. Huh? I'm a nobody, bro. No, no, you know, just that, no, 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 no. This dude is... I'm this, a servant. This <laughs> dude is one of the top trainers. In, in Georgia, man. So I've heard. That's why I wanted you to share that. Well, the top, top, I mean, me and him have chopped it up, man. Like, chopped it up just to, 
just to hear just to hear his point of view on stuff, man. Hi. It's how he puts things, man. Like, it's how it actually helped me as a I trainer. I'm a it, trainer, you know what I mean? So, um, definitely, man. Like, and, and you know, of course, he's very opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> which, yo, that's what makes you. That's that's what makes man, you who man. you are, and that's what makes you. That's what makes you a great trainer, man. You know what I'm saying? You got, man. You got to sell what you. I don't. You know, trainers, coaches. You can have the best X's and O's, this and that, but true, if you true. can't sell it. If your clients or your team or whatever, I don't care from from a corporation or a team, you can't sell your vision and what you're trying to get over. If you can't sell it to them, it, it, it's not going to work. They don't buy in. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, again, hit dogs holler. And some might get offended by this title, but I bet you'll pick the book up. And I can't wait to hear what is, what what it's really about. But the name of the book is, you may be the reason that your kid is trash. Let me say that again. (laughs) Let me say that again to y'all. You may be the reason that your kid is trash. And I'm going to let him explain it. But as a trainer, as a coach, former coach, man, we deal with it all. We deal with parents. And just just making the worst moves ever. And one move, I've seen one move change the trajectory yeah. of a kid. Yeah. One move. So, again, this is why we have this podcast, because you may be the reason that your kid is trash. Dorian, tell us about this book, man. Um, first of all, I've been in this game for so long, man. So, you know, 20 years, I've seen every style of parent, uh, every single... Uh, level those that had experience those that had no experience in the in entire athletic process um, and I saw the damage it did to the kids and I also saw the other end how a certain style of parenting helped elevate a kid it may have not been elevated in any other way um, so when I was doing some other projects you know online courses you know I always want something to kind of sell with it right or right. to put with it uh, as an add-on, actually, we, we you know, uh, some of this I give books away for free. But I thought about it, like, what is one of the main reasons that kids don't succeed? And the reason I chose the title, Trash, is kind of our, our hoop vernacular, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, trash, yeah. Like, like we say it about ourselves when we stank it up. Guess what, man? We were trash, man. I was yeah. trash tonight, right? Right. If we done killed a kid, like, how was a uh, homeboy when you played him? Dude, he, man, trash, trash, right? Right. Who we so, got next Friday night? They trash. They, they trash. We're gonna man. Run they them. That's just our our <laughs> yeah. topic. So I didn't want people to get offended to it right. uh, by the title, but I did want them to understand. Okay, look, what are some of these issues that parents are dealing with? Number one, and then also how are they handling those issues? And we gotta be honest. This is folks' first run. People can keep acting like they know the, the process. Right. You got your first child. This your first run. Right. Right. You ain't. You don't have no blueprint. For this, so you can try to copy Lavar, you can try to copy some other parents, you know, Todd Marinovich or something back in the day. Right. But you, you, you don't know because you haven't experienced. And even when you yeah. had a kid, you know what? You, you just, still don't you know. just made a good point because I kind of, it kind of, he kind of reminds me of myself. Right. Yeah. I think I'm a know-it-all <laughs> when it comes to sports. I'm an agent, used to coach, I played college football, Absolutely. doing this, doing that. But you're right. It is my first run on my But you do a good job. job. You do right, a, but you still, do but it's because do. I ask a lot. And that's yeah. what he's saying. Yeah. What he just said, he said a very good point. No matter what you know, it's still your first. And your it first is my run. first run. Because it's run. the first time I'm an actual sports dad. Right. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I never did that role. So Absolutely. go ahead. I just had to. And, and, and Dylan, like, like some of the stuff that we would say, man, I, I got three young killers. They're going to be killers. They're going to be in the league. Mm-hmm. That's what I believe. We gonna, I'm going to give them all of the resources. Now, the problem is I could be the reason they're trash at times myself. So this is not like I'm, you know, I'm free of this because people are going to love to hold this 10 years from now if they don't make it the way that right, I said right. and hold it up. Oh, I thought this went. I don't care about any of that shit. That don't right. mean anything to me, right? Love it. My point is I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to make sure that, you know, I give them the resources, that I give them the type of know-how. And one of the big things, like the first part of my book, the first chapter is about knowing parenting styles, right? Mm. People don't understand the four parenting styles, you know, the authoritarian, the authoritative, the permissive, and then the, the uh, 
uninvolved, right? That, that's just not even around, right? And the authoritarian is the one that it is my way, highway. I don't want to hear anything. You don't even have an opinion in this deal. I'm going to, you're going to do this. The authoritative has rules, has boundaries, but he also has some interaction with the kid. He, he take the authoritative authoritative okay. has some, uh, uh, conversation with the kid. He takes into consideration the mm. kid's feelings, mm. right? But ultimately he tells him why this is the route we're taking because of this. You don't understand it right now, but you'll see it later. Mm. Right. The authoritarian is just like, Hey man, old school. You, you do it. Drill sergeant. You do it. The permissive got rules, never enforces them. Mm. Man, you do this again. I'm telling you, I'm gonna take the phone. You do this again. We ain't, we ain't going to no more basketball practices. You flunk a class. Right. And then if you don't hold through with what you were talking about, the kid, the kid is going to continue down the same path. And then the uninvolved is just that. They're just not there. They're not involved at all. Really could care less about it. And sometimes that doesn't mean they're a bad parent. Oftentimes, like my dad wasn't a hooper. My dad was an incredible dad. He wasn't no hooper. So he, he came to one game. I led the city in scoring, a second in the city behind Antonio Lane, my senior year. He came to one game. Mm. My last game when I was, we were getting waxed, I was trashed that night <laughs> against Antonio Lane. Right, mm. four points my last game in high school, and that was the only game he came to. My dad was like, "Look, I, I keep the roof over your head. I work, blah blah blah." But he gave me other stuff that helped me along the way. Some real important lessons, but it had nothing to do with with, with basketball. So, in terms of that, you got to understand what's your parenting style, and mm. then once you realize that, you can start to correct some of your behavior. So your parent, so your, but your parenting style also depends on your child's personality in, in, in some regards. No, 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 no. In some regards, I could see where that would be the belief. Your style is kind of your style because it's rooted in how you were brought up. Mm. Right. So it shouldn't have to, it shouldn't have to deal with what type of kid yeah, you're dealing it, you don't, you don't I am adapt. who I am. Yeah. You don't adapt. That's you want to get them to adapt to you. You see what I'm saying? But that authoritative like you could is be the that one that adapts. And the kid, might still shut down, but you—that's still how you are. Absolutely, like, shut up and do it. Go, wake but up, think, but, but, wake but, up, do the five miles. But, but, but right, but but I, but I think that with certain things, like I'm just giving example. This is not even sports related. Me and my brother are like night and day. Yes, they definitely have <laughs> everything athletically. The way y'all look, you're compressed like this. He's a nice all American track star. But go ahead. Right. So he has a neck. <laughs> <laughs> so. We're like, we're, we're, we're like night and day, right? Mm -hmm. So my brother was kind of like, you know, just kind of straight lace. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Me? <laughs> <laughs> knucklehead. Knucklehead, right? Straight knucklehead. My brother walk in the house, you know, maybe with his hat turned backwards. Mm -hmm. Walk past my father. I walk into the house with my hat turned. Straighten your hat out. Right. Mm. Straight, straighten your hat out, man. So well, that's let me why see you, what you so that's why you're saying. Side. So that's why you're saying you, it depends on the kid. That's your that's yeah, what you're looking he, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he he just he you know he had he had to he had to parent us. They had to parent us different. My brother naturally just was a straight A student. I didn't give a damn about school like that. I I, I cared enough to play mm -hmm. sports. So they had to stay on, stay, you know, just stay on me. Yeah. So I'm just saying that. The, I, I, I but think, I think that still falls in that authoritative. Yeah. Like you are adapting to the you're, child. You're not, right. you're you. not letting you. He didn't. He wasn't permissive. He didn't let you just run through the house with your right. hat behind. Right. right. But he also didn't like, man, this is my and rule. If you can't, if you don't take it off right now, you out the house. It right. wasn't that. It was like, hey, man, clean that up. You're going to get your lesson. It was, it was still not a, I, I still think that they adapted. Right. And that pr it was proof that they yeah, adapted because yeah. they acted differently with one child versus right. the next, exactly. right? Yeah. So that to me, that's important. Once we kind of understand where we where we lie, then we can ask our questions. Why are we the way we are? Number one, voice in your head. You think that voice is your voice? The voice that's telling you, man, stop messing up, stop being dumb, man. Dude, whoever was the most influential person in your life, mm. that's their voice in your head, and you think it's yours. Mm. Right. So it's very important to realize why am I like this? Why am I so rigid? Right. Nobody can 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 tell me anything. Why? And then you start looking back at your upbringing. OK, 
My dad was like that with me. The coaches I had His were like that with like, me. I don't know why, why the hell did you, how the hell did you come out the way you are? What do you mean? Uh, your father wasn't like, your father was kind of chill dude. My dad? He wasn't chill? Oh, maybe that was just what he, what he gave off to us. Well, yeah, but what you mean? It's I'm saying, saying you said you're a know-it-all. Yeah. Your, was your father a know-it-all? No. Exactly. So where, but, how yeah, you but that, that's different. I'm, I'm a know-it-all because of what I've experienced. I feel like I know, I'm a know-it-all in sports because of my past. Gotcha. That's all I'm saying. Gotcha. But you also got to realize he has, two, he has a set of twins. He has an older knucklehead. <laughs> and then he has a younger oh, sister. Was, so he has a young. So listen, and he has a younger, and the youngest is a, a, a daughter. So he had four different. That's so true. So it's kind of different. Me and my twins, completely, completely different. different. Right. Yeah. You so, see what I'm saying? so basically, man, you, you, you got to realize why you are, and then you got to you got to start adjusting. You are the adult. You got to make the adjustment. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do I back off? Like for me, my daddy, and, and I'm, I'm going to say something about my dad, right? I, I told you, wasn't an athletic dad or whatever. My mom was the athlete. Ran for Evelyn Lewis at Alabama mm. State, which was Carl Lewis' mama. Mm. Played mm. basketball back when it wasn't even fashionable. She mm. in the 50s doing multi-sports, mm. right? And my dad, I had a, had a sax, saxophone incident, the infamous saxophone incident. So in... I was about 12 years old. I don't know what the fuck I was watching, but it, it, it was something. And I saw somebody playing a sax. I thought it probably was sex. It was going to give me some girls. Right. And I wanted a saxophone. So in the mid 80s, my dad put twelve hundred dollars. We ain't had no money like that. But dog, I'm telling you, twelve hundred. Still a lot. Still a lot. Right. <laughs> for, for something just to throw it away. Twelve hundred dollars. And they came to the uh, to the little concert we had. And I was last chair. I was the worst one. Right. And you could see black parents, you could see them sitting in the, in, in the crowd. Here. 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 So soon as it was over, they said, my, my dad said, look, man, I, I put this money. Look, if you ain't going to play it, if you're not going to practice, I need to try to figure out a way to get my money back. I ain't want to do it no way. I, 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 I flipped off. And my dad, for the first time, he, he ain't whooped me or anything. He looked at me first and did just like this. Same mannerisms my dad got, I got. And he, wasn't, he was looking at me and talking to my mom. Say, Doris, don't worry about it. I'm going to take it back, and we won't buy him another thing. Next thing my dad did for me, he co-signed for my car at 23. Mm. I was 12 years old. Oh, Dang. wow. This is real talk. This ain't no exaggeration. Outside of the normal, I'm going to feed you. Right. I'm going to clothe you, but this is what we got for clothes. We got $30 budget for shoes. If you want something that's over 30, you have to put your money with it. And that was it. He was unapologetic. And mm. what it taught me was, I got to respect other folks' money and their time. Mm. But that's a lesson. He could have whooped that lesson into me. Mm. But he showed me that lesson. And 20 years later, my daughter was pulling something. It was like deja vu. I mm. felt like I had assumed the position of my mm. dad. And I was like, I won't get you another thing. Mm. And my daughter, who was watching this, will tell you, she paid her way through college. She didn't mm. want to hoop. Mom was the number one player in the state of Alabama. Had all kind of offers. Wow. Right? Didn't want to play. And I was like, look, this is the family business. I, look, this is how we, we, I convert this to cash. You want the cash. We ain't got the cash. But I'm going to give you a skill that you can convert to cash. Mm. You don't want the skill. So mm. guess what I said? Mm. You on your own. Everybody, oh, you wrong. Come on, man. That girl don't have to. You on your own. So when I talked about, you know, in our first chapter, I talked about, uh, Kids, you know, or parents just poorly assessing their kids everything. Mm. And when I say that, I put, um, poorly assessing, um, your kids everything. Meaning work ethic. You always tell me, he work hard, this and that. Is he in deep like or is he in love? Because see, deep like is different. So if, I, if I'm, relationships, you deep like your wife, you ain't putting up with half the stuff you're going to put up with if you love her. See, the love it's commitment. It's not just a feeling. The like is based on that feeling, right? So for me, I had to, basketball, I loved, I was committed to it. So the days it wasn't good to me or I didn't think it was good for me, I had to, I had to fight through it. Kids don't look at it and parents believe that kids have that level of love. And I say, like, how much, how much time are they spending at home on their own? Well, you know, they, they get out there sometimes where I said, no, I mean, is it, uh, is it one of those things like my mom used to do? Hey, Dorian, come in here. They be shooting out here. You don't need to be out here this late. Right? And I'm still trying to get the last shot in before I go in. Are kids doing that? That's how you assess whether they do really love do, it. Do, 
you, you can't make them do that. No, it's just this love. Like you've got this something in you yeah. that want you want to be the best at what you do. If yeah. you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it with some level of excellence. Yeah. I, I, and that's I, it. I, so people people don't believe me, but when when you know I was a coach at Southwest Atlanta Christian Academy, girls mm-hmm. coach or whatever, and we used to have early morning workouts. So Messiah, my son, he would he he, he would say he said he was like seven years old. No, he was six. Dad, when I well, why I can't do early morning workouts? Absolutely. I said, and how old was he? He was like six. Oh, okay, okay. Because we won the state championship in two thousand six, so it was it was, yeah, yeah. I was like, shit, <laughs> tomorrow? Absolutely. This dude, I'm and, and, and I'm talking about until like, dude, he at like six, seven years old. I'll be in there asleep. He would be climbing on me. Dad, get up. Get up. Just be that's six true. o'clock in the morning. See, that's, that's get up, Dad. Come on, Dad. We gotta get to the gym. You gotta feed that. You gotta feed that. We I mean, and then so so now fast forward, fast forward on a Friday night at 12 years old. We we playing a video game in the house. He look at me, it'd be like eleven o'clock at night, ten o'clock, ten o'clock at night. He look at me and say, Time to go get some shots up. Yeah, let's go. Fast forward to now. His coach just told me at Alabama AM. and He's like, dude, gym. when everybody's leaving after practice, he roll, he's rolling <laughs> the shooting machine into the gym mm-hmm. on the court. So to your point, there's a difference between the deep light. Yeah, and love. But see, the love. other thing, too, is about, you know, uh, inspecting what you expect. So he does all of that, right? And I know another group of kids that go to the gym eight hours right when everybody leaving they walking right. in and the time they in there they on their phone they go around take one shot right they sit down they stretch a little bit right. and then they leave out of there and they post on Instagram right. but <laughs> this this grind is unreal get the lights this, the this, lights this, you, you all of this stuff man right. with your head that you know ball is life all of this stuff for, for the for the cameras but you got to inspect what are they actually doing mm. when they are in that mm. gym. Mm. That's when you determine. Mm. And if you ain't been there to observe them, mm. you got to stop. Man, I, th- let me say this, this story. This, this is a story. A good friend of mine, an attorney who represents, um, uh, you know, the family, the Irvin family, right? He's done some work with them. Irving family? Yeah, Kyrie Irvin oh, okay. uh, oh, know, Kyrie and Irving. his dad, right? He said that uh, he was killing at, at some point in time, early, like maybe ninth or whatever. And he was saying, like, you know what? His dad was like, you, you good for these little, you know, kids around here, man. But you ain't no, no national level, whatever. And he said every time <laughs> his dad would leave, Kyrie was out at the goal. And when he would pull back up that evening, Kyrie was at the goal. And guess what he was saying to himself? He ain't been out here no all day. He ain't been out here all day. And so finally, at the end of that summer, he called him out. He said, hey, Dad, come out here. Let, 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 let's, let's play one-on-one. And so his dad was going to give him the ball like he usually said, no, nah, you, 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 you get it because it's going to be your last time touching. And he beat him something like, I, I can't remember the score, you know, 7-4 or whatever. Then the next game, he beat him like 11-0 and told him, I'm a motherfucking pro. Mm. And his dad said, you know what? You're a pro. Mm. Right, mm. Th- th- that that energy, but see, even right. that type of parenting, like, don't you ever curse at me. But that that when that passion come out of a kid, yeah. <laughs> that ability to be like, all right, right, you you a pro, right. Now right. what you gonna do now? And then that's our time to 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 to, to teach again. So now what you gonna do with the fact that you know it? Mm. Are you gonna sit on it? You gonna continue to develop that gift? Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like like it's, it's moments, man. My daddy. Prove that to me. Moments he could have whooped me. It was like, no, nah, you keep fighting at school. It's cool. Hey, Doris, because, you know, he used to look right at me and be talking to my mom. Hey, Doris, they make long cemetery plots and short cemetery plots. They got one for all their size. Mm. It's like, damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> damn. Damn. Hey, 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 you flunk eighth grade, you going back to the same school next year, and they're going to laugh at you. You're going to be the biggest one in the desk. We ain't switching schools. Hey, Doris, we already got, didn't we go through eighth grade? High school? Yeah. Okay, you don't hurt us. And so it made me have to think, like, am I really hurting them? Mm. Right? But that's the type of parenting, right? Right, right. One of the big things in my book I talk about 
uh, shielding kids from all negative experiences. And one of the big issues mm -hmm. I have is the fact that parents want to shield them. Like, I don't want them to go that route, so I'm going to move them here. And I don't want them to go this route, I'm going to move them here. And I'm going to adjust. Man, at the end of the day, it's going to flow back to the same river. You're going to have to face whatever you avoid, and you're going to have to face it. Yes. And at some point in time, the very person that you want your kids to develop and become, you're actually thwarting that growth by not allowing them to go through that flame. Because ultimately what everybody wants, man, and we gotta be, let's, let's just keep it a buck. Everybody wants to be number one on their way to becoming number one. Mm. Want to be the number one first grader, second grader, third grader. First. When in the hell are you going to be in an adversarial position where you chasing that's, something? Yeah. Versus always being the so, top dog. So with your topic on that, you saying shielding, shielding the kids from what? Negative? All ne negative, negative experiences. experiences. First, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind when you say that? What's that? Fucking portal system right now. In Boy, some ways, but well, okay, so that's and, and not, but, but, be, so that's be. not always wrong. I'm just saying, I just said the first no, thing right. that my no, mind. No, no, you're In right. what way do you, so I want to be clear. Right. What, 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 what about me, the portal? I'm just saying that made me think the portal because I know of some cases, kids are running away from, Absolutely. running away from situations. But, but you know who you are. Or, or it's starting real, it's really starting at the AAU level. Absolutely. When we talk about basketball, football, not so much, because football, but, once you're on the team for the season, you kind of have to stay there. But I'm talking about kids who's looking, oh, he not playing me, or this, that, I'm going to another team. But guess who they always bring with them when they move? Who? Themselves. Right. You can't, you can't move without right. you. Right. So you're going to go everywhere you mm. go, mm. you're going to be there. Right. Mm. right. Absolutely. So that's my whole point. Everybody is going to be, you're going to be there. So whatever issues you have, if you don't resolve them, that's right. You're going to have that's those right. same issues everywhere. We, 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 don't we experience that as men, the same issues we didn't have right. for years. That's right. We still encountering yeah. some until of that grow, stuff until, yeah. we, until we face it and run through it. But let's, let's talk about the flip side of that though, because this is my, like, we, we got to talk about, because I hear parents, I mean, I hear we, and I agree with you because we are, our generation, is the helicopter generation. Absolutely. We the ones. We want them to be tough, but then right. we, everything that we can the make ones, them tough, bro. we don't want them to we go We the through. ones, bro. We, we, we the ones that are hovering over our kids, man. Oh, no, you're about to scrape your knee. Don't scrape your knee. Let me put my hands, let me put, and scrape my knuckles. What, what's right. the big one? Hand sanitizer right now. <laughs> right. Man, you know why we ain't get sick that much? Right. Because we ate the mud pie right. and hey. ain't washed our hands. What now, all, baby? Sickly because we everything got to be exactly. sterile. Wipe it down. Don't touch this. Day. Man, let them roll on that floor. That's man. right. So, the flip side of that is, man, because and this is part of the culture that I don't like. And again, I, I may be a little jaded because I, I my son went through a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As a small guard. And that's one of the big issues. Okay. Though, it's perception. Perception. But the politics that are in this get just in youth sports, sports, like, sports, sports, sports in general, baseball, so, tennis, right, all right. So, so the policy, so you may, that's why it's so important that you be in the right program, the right system, because let's just talk about AAU. We talk about AAU and this travel, this goes all the way up to college. You, it does, sometimes it doesn't matter that you're the best player. It's about, <laughs> it's, it's about, are you on the right side of the politics? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Again, like, like, it, 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 so sometimes you got to move. Hold on, hold on. Listen, chapter five, right? Understanding the politics of the game. Mm. Now, the problem with it, though, is we only talk about politics when we're the victim of it. We never talk about it no. when we're the beneficiary. Wait, let me, so let, wait, wait, wait. So let me right? interrupt real quick. One thing I but tell I agree parents, with you. one thing I tell parents all the time. Listen, they be talking about that. I hear them all the time to complain about this, complain about that. I say, listen, what you got to understand, it's going to be politics in every situation that you go. You just got to be in a, a position where you're on the right side of the politics. But, 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 you said but, that to me. But, but the, a, hear a me out when ago. I say this. You said that, being this, on the right this, side. So you got to create a situation where you politic proof. So mm. the reason you make the change is because you, you don't poorly assess. You you uh, aptly assess what's going on. You know your kid got the work ethic. You know he got the game. You know he's right. actually That's better right. than the person in front. That's now, right. here's the key, though. That's right. We do too much arbitrary bullshit, man. And what I mean by that is, he, he's, he, I'm better than him. I always ask kids, how? Tell him, talk to him. 
How are you better? How have you measured that? Well, I just, you know, I'm, I'm you know, my handle better. In what situations? You're talking about breaking down. You're talking about pressure up the floor, mm. controlling the offense. How is your handle better? Well, you know, okay, well, all right, uh, shot. My shot is better. Okay, how have you measured that? Right? You ain't been in the game, so how are you measuring this? What kind of competition and practice that allows for you to determine that I am a better player? Right. Now, I had this before with one of my kids that went to college, and he selected a college that I didn't think he, you know, it fit him. But what he said was, you know, he was like, you know, he promised me certain things, but he had gone to a, he was a guard that went to a spot that had two all-conference guards. Right. So where was he going to play as a, a, honestly, as a freshman, right? And I was asking, he said, man, I'm, I'm killing in practice. And I said, okay, describe killing. I'm, I'm, I'm getting buckets. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, making plays. I said, now let me ask you, is it enough to upseat the incumbent? Is it enough to get the person who started out of that? Like, so, so, so let me this get this you right. you talking to a kid. To, to a kid. I said, see. so are you locking him down to a point where he can't get a shot off? Then you going down on that end, killing him so bad that it's so obvious. Oh, no, nah, we go kind of back and forth. Okay, so if you, a, a freshman came in and you were the one that was there, and right. y'all going back and forth, do you think that's enough for them to not make you a starter? Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See, it's the way we, we look at it, Yeah. right? How yeah. many times it, when Messiah was, if he had a game where he was stanking it up, that he said, hey, man, put, put, uh, John, and he, he right now, I'm, I'm, I'm stanking it up. I'm stanking it up. He better than me right now. No, he stayed his ass out there on that floor and kept hooping, and he didn't lobby for the dude who was being the victim of the politics at right. that moment because right. he was stanking it up. Right. Did he lobby? So once we understand that, right, we learn to let go of worrying about that, to, in my opinion. I think now we handle what are your controllables, right? Mm. So, you know, when, when, when Stephen Covey wrote the book, the, the, you know, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he talked about the sphere of concern and the sphere of influence. The sphere of concern is like this. Man, will I get playing time? Am I going to go pro? You know, uh, is the coach going to like me? How are my teammates going to respond? That's the sphere of concern. But the sphere of influence, how I approach it every day, how many shots I'm getting up, mm. how hard I work. Mm. When you stay in this little thing, it starts to encompass the spirit of concern. But don't you agree? But don't. But, but but don't you agree? Right now, and that's like it with, with social media and just the culture, the, the the climate of the culture now is like some. Just sometimes none of, that doesn't matter, man. Like it's so political. Then you then you, right now. then you move. See, that's when you move. But right. see, most people move. What you were saying about the portal is. People moving before they really even assess that. They just automatically That's say, the first Coach, thing I like me. But, but when we, my thing is, when you're saying parents, what, what did you just say? You said, my thing is, a lot of these parents, they don't know. That's what I want to get at. Mm. That's why they don't know. Because they're not honestly to, assessing them. No, they, it's not even that. They just not right, even right, right. know. No, right, I'm right, talking right, right. to a parent down the day, right. and he's telling written. me, that first of all, he's mad because there's this rankings that came out and he feels that his son is better than these kids. So I said, number one, I said, you think these college coaches are calling this even look one good. dude about ranking? That's the first thing I asked him. Then, and, and then, you know, it kind of, you know, and I'm not going to name names, but he's telling me like, okay, the, the coach, he's getting ready to play 17 and under. Mm -hmm. He feels as if the coach is not a real good X and O coach. He's just good with contacts and all that, but he's not a good X and O coach. So I might be moving him. I'm sitting there like, mm. you don't know the game, my brother. Like, if when I'm in that position, I'm going with the coach who got the connects. <laughs> the X and O, they don't, they're not looking to see but, if but, you're on a circuit, if you're if you're playing. But it still I depends on the situation because yeah, it, I got the connects, so I need the X's and O's with a little exposure. Right. I want you to be able to coach him. I, I'm gonna get him where he needs to get. I don't need right, a coach. Right, right, right. Exactly. Okay. Right? So because yeah, there you go. In, in this situation here, he I'm, needs. A, he needs I'm a thinking contract. he needs the coach with the connections because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're on a good circuit, and there's no now one college coach is in there rooting for a team to win. 
They are they assessing don't the kids. They, 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 they don't give a damn. You can go on a circuit and play five games in Wisconsin, but, but, and if the coaches are in there, they're not looking at the right. scoreboard only from the right. clock. Can, right. can I, not, I, can that's I, can the I, way I'm looking at can it. Can I flip it a little bit? Yeah. Then, right? So, for instance, the coach, you got, you know, uh, Penny, you got uh, Calipari, you got uh, Coach K or whoever that, that yeah. Shia, Shia, I can't remember, I don't know who is there. But they're sitting here. One is like, I'm looking for somebody who can play with other good players in a system. Another one saying, I just want the best athlete that I can find. Mm, just, right? right everybody so something so different. what you got to figure out is, where's your kid going to fall in the mix? If your kid is a, you think your kid is not going to be a top tier Giannis style athlete, then I need to have him on a team that reflects how he'll be able to play in a system. Right? And, yeah, about that all right. all the time. But if he a straight athlete that don't really have a lot of system skill, I want him on the team that got the coach with the context that's just letting them play. Because now I'm gonna always get the arrogant coach who looks and says, Yeah, he, he doesn't do this well. Man, he don't really do this well. But his athleticism, and when he comes to me, I'm gonna get in there with him at 5 a.m. shooting. We're gonna do this, and they still be sorry. Right? You know what I'm saying? That, that's that's just the truth. A lot of times. You, you, we're arrogant. We look at the checklist of that athleticism. So what I'm saying is we got to figure out what's the best fit for where they're going to be. So if he plays on that team and they just run in the muck and he really ain't that type of dude who can just go get a bucket for himself. Totally agree on that. That's what I'm saying. saying. We got to like these parents got to want to learn and that's why I wrote because I'm talking about that. That that dad that didn't play sports, right. or that single mom that just don't know. But she thinks it's you politics, don't, you don't but it's really not politics. Your son I, don't fit. I, that's what I'm. That's, or, or 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 the kid is trash. I don't. <laughs> no, I that that we can't just, do nothing about. No, no, but right no, now we're just, we're, just, we're, just, we're trying to reach that down, listener right. that just don't know though, no, know. and want to help them. No, like you said. The main thing is to help let me let me ask you a question. Navigate. Let me ask you a That's question. Let me ask one you this. Right. That don't know it. All right. Let me ask you this. Right. If you were buying a house and these are real questions, right? And I need answers. Yes. You were buying a house. Yes. First realtor you talk to fifth, sixth, seventh, or you going to only talk to the realtor. Or are you going to look online yourself and try to figure some stuff out? Or are you going to talk to your friend who sold a house recently and purchased right. the house right. recently? Yes. Or are you going to call one right. of your real estate right. a right. friend? Right. All right. Right. All right. We have too much uh, bleacher uh, consultations. Mm. I'm sitting here and I see a kid killing Lil Jamal, right? Who does Lil Jamal work with? He worked with Dorian. Man, I got to get with Dorian. Well, do you really? You don't know yet. You don't know if he has that natural ability and I'm just running him through drills and he has it. Or if you came and saw some of the stuff that Jamal has gone through understanding PNR man one of the brightest minds man my boy run pick and roll like one of my college players right now you say okay I, I need to go to him because he's teaching them the game but you don't know that just from somebody talking in the stands or because that person trains this person and if you notice training just like AAU teams it's really a function of where everybody going Everybody going over here, he must be the best. Right. Everybody going over here, he must be the best. Right. Not necessarily. It's not always a function, right? Because I might be a high, high ticket guy where you, you got to pay to come to me because I know where to hit. And when I say know where to hit, it was the, you know, the, the talk about the plumber. The plumber comes to this lady's house, drain clogged up. He looked around, flushed the toilet, still didn't work, took his wrench, tapped the uh, pipe twice, flushed. He said it's $500. Come, come on now, five hundred dollars, and you just tap the pipe. Right. He said, "No, no, no, no. It, it, it's it's fifty dollars for tapping the pipe. It's four fifty for knowing where to tap." Mm. See, that's the difference between mm. trainers. And by the time you get it, it's oftentimes too late. You too late in the game right. to make that adjustment. But it's it's bleacher consultations. Like, you need to get over here with him, right? Or you need to. And people follow that instead of seeking expert counsel. You went and investigated this real estate before you purchased, mm -hmm. right? You gotta go look. I always have seeking this disclaimer. Expert counsel. I always, always make this disclaimer, man. I always do it, and, and I, I know this. Sound, that's that's sound. what I'm trying to say. That's yeah. what this. this that's is. what we're asking. Look, look. Hit the subscriber so we can no, tell you how to, to navigate me. through it. So, so or help you rather. But I'm, I'm always about this. I've, I've said it before. 
I would prefer you going to every trainer, every single trainer, and then come to me last. So you can truly understand the differences versus me promising, oh man, you come to me, I'm gonna get you right there. No, because something in the back of your mind, when soon as somebody says something like, nah, this one over here is doing this. No, go find out what they're doing first, right? Go to them. I don't have any fear. If you go over there and if you bond or something, you got to stay with them. But once you make this, I think it's worth the investment to go around and then come to a trainer last. Then you know they, they ain't all created the same. And I think that has to, but, 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 I think that also, like, when, you, when we talk about picking the right program, the right school, the right, you know, it's just different strokes for different, for, for different yes, folks. Yes, that's man. what I'm trying to say. You got to ask. You got to do your research. You got to do your You, you got to say go what your best friend right. is over here. If, 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 I mean, in my household, of course, with sports, I'm making the decisions. My wife, you pick what color tiles you want, <laughs> what type of drapes or curtains you want. As long as I'm breathing, but I'm also trying to teach her so if there's a day I do stop breathing, you can know how to navigate Absolutely. yourself. Go to a trainer and say, what are you known for? Try to talk to your kid's coach and say, what he does he need help on? Right. I brought my oldest one to, to Jermaine. And I, what did I say last year? I said, Sh get a shot right. right. I don't care about all that 10 c dribble combinations, any of that mess right now, because he ain't going to be able to do it. His, his shot is off. And he got his shot better. He's, and it's improving. But that's me because I kind of know, you know, you got some people that, you know, some trainers I look on, on, on Instagram, I said, there's no way in the world I would give them a dime because some of this, you but, know. But, but sometimes again, and I, I will defend trainers because that's one thing that I have to, I have to do in Please this industry. Do. I'll defend trainers because we're taking a, a, a 10 second snapshot on something. Yes. We don't know what we're working on. You don't right. know what phase of the developmental process that we're in. Right. And so. I love when people, you, you've been in the gym with me and you, you understand my eye for stuff like my detail, right? Um, a lot of people are like, man, you, you, his hands ain't right. And I'm like, we're working on feet right now. His mm. biggest primary issue was his feet. We're going to get his feet. Once these feet get right, we're going to get his hands. Gee, what, then we're going to get his sis. I've said that about Bree. Yeah, a couple times when I got on him, I said, yo, we back to this again. We did that in the third. And he was like, yo, he, he lost touch in some we gotta find you know we I mean? gotta find his stroke exactly. again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and it, and it happens. So I'm, I'm defending that. But yeah, I, what my point is, even in the evaluation of trainers, you gotta have some knowledge, some some base, right? Everybody is training now. Everybody is coaching. Everybody got an AU team, right? Mm -hmm, right? So at the end of the day, which one is the best one for you, man? You gotta, like you said, you that, gotta you, you go. gotta go evaluate. But then, what does that go back to? Assessing your child correctly. Because you can't go through them. I, if I put him over here with these wolves, maybe it'll make him but, become a wolf. No, maybe he's going to get I want, I just want to have to tell I want to help these parents that don't know how to assess them. I want to help them. But, but teach they have them. to seek counsel, though. Like That's said, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's encourage them to ask the right question. You right. have to ask the right question. Whether your kid's 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, or 14. If you don't know, ask. Go to a coach or say, come to, my coach, come, come to my son's game. Tell me what you think. What, what is he doing wrong? No, yes, you, no, you, yes. you I, want to be able to, because I'm, just, I'm, I'm talking for that, 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 that follower but, that but, just don't know. Yeah, and, and see, I still think because of the, man, and, and this, is this one we can say whatever we want to yes, say? Yes, right. so, yes. You know, the, 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 the extension of our appendage, right? We always, with our kids, whether we want to acknowledge it as men and even as women, it's some extension of our manhood, extension of our family tree and lineage. This is my baby. And so the, one of the tragic things about having success early, a lot of these kids have tremendous success early. So you really ain't listening at that point. You don't want to listen. Your kid, the, the next one, you think it because you don't know. Well, I'm looking at this kid. Kid, right. kid, kid is I'm two years. He won't even be playing. Right. <laughs> exactly. No, and I'm, yeah. I'm dead serious. No, yeah, I, I, I predicted. I'd be that. like two yeah, years. Yeah, 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 nigga ain't gonna be playing. Oh man, he, he the best third grader. In the first. He gonna I be said, looking for a team. two he years. He won't somebody be. For him yeah. to play. Yeah. And so, so they don't even understand that aspect of it because the ego is so big. And then by the time you 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 you're humbled, the confidence might be gone and shy. It might be over by that point. So you gotta stay ahead of the curve. Nothing is worse. Nothing is worse than getting, uh, you know, you got a, 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 a big vision, 
for a kid, right? And nothing is worse than having a player or a moment humble them, right? I mean, it's important for it to happen, but it's nothing worse for that to be the first exposure to the possibility that you ain't the shit. And you got to be telling, you got to be, listen, dude, I'm telling you, it is other kids halfway around the world that, in Slovenia that will but, but drag Dor- your ass right now. Dor- right. On the side of the city. Dor- Dor- right. Dor- that, and that's the problem with these guys, these so-called, these top prospects. They, they roll out the red carpet for them. They don't, because I they don't read give, all, They're I, reading their own pre- press clipping. Yeah. Is that what you're Yeah, saying? yeah. But, yeah. But, but this is the thing. I don't give a damn how good you are. At some point, it's because we, to so it, 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 so these kids that you level. were here and these kids that were here who hadn't reached puberty yet and they get here, you're going to have to learn whether it's in high school, middle school, high school or college, you're going to have to learn how to push through. And a lot of times they don't and they fold, man. As soon as, as, soon as adversity comes, they fold. But, but see, the problem is that's, that's one of the big things when we look at players, even when they get to the league, a quitter, what, what, what is a quitter? A person who quits. Mm-hmm. What is a winner? A person, person who wins. wins. So it doesn't matter what situation a quitter is going to quit. quit. Even though that quitter hadn't been in situations that forced them to quit. When they run into it, whether it's NFL, NBA, they're going to fold. Now, did they fold after they pocketed 30 mil? Maybe. Cool. That's all right. So you knew you were going to fold. You knew you ain't have it. But you were able to beat the system, get your change, and now you can go do some other stuff with it. But ultimately, quitters gonna quit. Winners gonna win. That's why you can't really say the wrong thing to the right person, right? Can't really say the wrong thing to the right person. I, but motherfucker, you ain't gonna never make it. You tell me that, I wasn't finna go cry in my room or whatever. I'd be like, all right, right. gotcha. Mm-hmm. Right. So I used to tell my coaches, yeah, I gotcha, right? You can't tell. You can whatever you want to say to me. You're not gonna break me off of my path. Right. To where I want, where That's I want right. to be, That's right. but a quitter will use that man. You know, I remember. You know how many times I get these phone calls, man. You know, it's just a coach I had. Every time I hear coaches, coach, coach, I, I, it was you. I don't even. I, it was you. I, I'd have had every issue with a coach you can name. I did. I, the reason I left North Florida and came and played at Spring Hill because I was going to do a little trail spree. Well, I came back in the gym, and I was I was dead set on going at my coach, right? And at that point. We had to be mediated by the president of the school. It's a real story, man. I set out my senior year in North Florida, let him in score in my junior year, senior year, poised to have an incredible year, and I set out mm. because I had a disagreement with the coach. But mm. my mind was, I'm, 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 I'm going to break your ass before you break me, mm. right? But in a sense, that was breaking me because I got out of character and said, you know what? I should have just let, let that go, right? But the mentality... Right, that the coaches, I'd have had all types of coaching issues. I had injuries. I had everything. It's nothing you can tell me. Well, when I hurt my foot, I just couldn't. I had 11 surgeries, man. Damn. I'd have had seven since I've been training. I was over at uh, uh, Epicenter with a boot on with the tour. I tore my Achilles over at the Epicenter playing and literally have surgery, and the next day I'm in the gym. <laughs> I'd have had knee replacement, all these. This ain't leeches on my leg, these real, mm. these real scars. So don't tell me about, well, it was the injury and then the coach. Then my mama just wasn't supportive. I told you how many games my dad had been to. I'm second in the city in scoring, walking home from games sometimes. Mm. Ain't nobody picking me up. Mm-hmm. And I'm in the paper the next mm. day. So, 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 so let's talk about, so, so go, I just want, before, I want you to go through, just tell what each chapter, like the name of each chapter. So, so the, to, and, and I don't have go. it in front of me, but the first chapter is, uh, you know, uh, understanding your parenting style, mm-hmm. right? Two is uh, poorly assessing your child's um, everything, mm. right? Three is shielding them from uh, all negative experiences, mm. right? The other one is fighting all of your kids' battles. Now, people think shielding them from all negative experiences and fighting the battles are the same thing. It's not, it's not the same thing. Fighting the battle. Every time a kid comes to me and, and I ask him, I say, man, talk to me. What, what you need to work on? Well, what he needs to work on is... That, I'm sorry, mom. I ain't asked you. I, I asked him. Right? Fighting everything. Well, the coach, I'm going to come up there and talk to the coach tomorrow. And the coach ain't going to be doing my baby like that. Right? right? That's another. Right? The, the, the one I talked about, knowing and understanding the politics of the, the game. Right? And then the last chapter is, mm-hmm. you know, uh, 
what was the word I just told you? Uh, uh, Negative. No, my uh, baby can do no wrong syndrome. My baby can do no wrong. He can't do. He, he can't do no wrong. He didn't do that. He don't. He, he doesn't have that. That he he never talks. Come on, man. I talk back to mama like my mom. My mom was an educator. When I got in trouble at school, you know what she said? You talk back to me. I know you did it to right. the teacher. You know All right. So what, what? What? So what do you do again? Right. 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 You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the that's the thought process. Yeah. Right. That's the thought process. Yeah. For me, that's why I wanted, and I wanted it to be simple. I didn't want no, you know, 40 plus pages straight with action steps at the end. Yes. Va- evaluating certain things. Look at this in your kid. How many times have you asked your kid to come inside from, from, from work? How many times have you told him to put the ball down to finish his homework? How many times? That's when we start evaluating the love. Yes. Conversely, how many times have you told him to pick up the ball, yes. work on this game? Pick up the ball, you know, or pick up the jump rope and jump. Man, are you going to try to get stronger, get to the weight room? Then you're going to start being able to assess certain things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, think about, like in the book about politics, think about a time that you were a victim of politics. Then I want you to, to like, how did you handle it? Right? What was your response? Then think about a time when you were a beneficiary of politics. How did you handle that? Mm-hmm. What was your response? So it's making you reflect, right, and taking these steps to see, am I the issue? Because at the end of the day, you just want to, it's not about mm. whether they become an elite player or not. You just don't want to be the hindrance to them becoming that. I don't want to give you, I don't want you to give them too much because I want them to buy the book. <laughs> but before you go, Dwayne, let them know. First of all, we're, we're, we're launching we're, it soon. It hadn't been, it had been okay. released. Where can they follow you um, on social media? Uh, can they follow at you? At B-Ball 101 EPD. B-Ball 101 EPD. Okay. At Evolve Basketball app uh, also. So. Got you. Man. Got you. Man, Dorian, I knew it was going to be a treat. <laughs> but see, this is the thing, man. Again, that's why we're doing this podcast. This is it. This is the reason. And, you know, I, I t- again, I take my personal experiences, man. And I, 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 I've always, I, I've, it's been in my, this has been on me for years to do this because I just watch so many people. The, the people are lost. They're lost, man. Parents are lost. Players are lost. Coaches are lost. The so-called handlers are lost. And they're misguiding our kids, man. Again, this is supposed to be recreation. You break down recreation, it's recreation. Mm -hmm. So what are we recreating? And we want to recreate productive citizens in society. Man, so we're going to wrap this up. CGN, we all we got. Pick our nation, number one pick in the nation Man, I need my payment, man, I need my placement I am, yeah, starting on the payment I am, King our nation, number one Yeah, one of the scores like 40 to 40 Buy for a movie, a 30 for 30 Fit from the south, make it real dirty Been talking loud, but nobody heard me Is that to me up? CG and D&D, y'all can't start Y'all can't call me on James, y'all thought y'all was worth it Y'all listen